How did you came up with the idea to do poem? Well, I guess two reasons. One is when I was in high school, um, I guess I, I just feel really comfortable talking about sex. So people would often come to me with their sex questions. And my mom had told me that if I had any questions or my friends had any questions, she would find me the answer without judging us. And so I let that be known. And, and I really liked um, you know, being able to help people that way and um, you know, us being able to support each other. So I feel like that's kind of related to my decision to do porn. But also, um, when I first saw porn, I thought it was very exciting on principle. And I liked the idea of you know, women being able to see something that really turns them on. But even though it was a little bit of a turn for the most part, I just did not like what was out there. And I kept waiting like year after year, like looking to see what was available. And I rented porn all the time. And I just never you know, saw something that really worked for me for more than two minutes. So I would look for the two minutes that worked for me, and I thought, this is ridiculous, it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, eventually I thought, well, if no one else is going to make what I like, then I should make what I like. And, you know, maybe other people would like it too. And that has turned out to be true. <laughs> so, that's true. How did you find your actors for it? So there was no, like, nobody who worked in this area or anything. It was completely figuring it out myself. So um, I did a lot of postering. So in a way, like, this was 2004. This, like, there weren't so many internet places you could go. And in um, Holland, the Netherlands where I live, there isn't, um, there wasn't at the time a big actor uh, website. So there were fewer places that you could post to find, you know, uh, theater or film actors. Um, there was one a film site that I posted on, but I did a lot of physical posters and took them to like film schools, theater schools, dance schools, circus schools, um, performance art uh, training places, uh, because those were the kind of people that I was looking for. Um, and I just said, hey, like, you know, if you feel like your art could accommodate what we're doing here, then give me a call. And I really, I got great responses. Um, because I was also shooting in English, I think I also posted on some like expatriate websites. And I'm sure most of the people on the expatriate websites were like, what the heck? What is it that she wants? But that was really important that I'd be able to do it in English. One of the things that I learned is that people from like the trained theater community um, or film community have already like thought a little bit about porn and how they don't want to do it sometimes. So there were a lot of people who saw my ad and specifically did not call. Um, but people who were like performance artists or uh, or dancers, like they were just much more flexible about what um, what they could accommodate with their performance. So yeah, that that was really exciting to see. So I was very happy with how it turned out. One ballet dancer, one mainstream theater performer. That worked out really good. So I think in Berlin, it's a lot of productions are low budget to no budget. Yeah. So how did you? To the finance in your first projects? Um, I had had a previous career, so I worked in advertising and I had saved up a little money when I moved to the Netherlands. Um, and uh, I basically used my savings to do it. So, um, so yeah. Like all the other. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have to say, being a, a filmmaker right now is the worst. Like, I wouldn't recommend to anybody to get involved in film if they feel like there's anything else they could do, you know? <laughs> Only be a filmmaker if you have no choices at all, and this is like your true love, um, which this is for me, and you can't do anything else because it's difficult right now with, you know, distribution has changed, um, you know, piracy has taken a huge bite out of all kinds of film, but particularly out of porn and erotic film. So it's a really difficult time. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm completely independent right now. So uh, it's really challenging to make ends meet and get people paid on my films because I really would like to pay everybody on the production, even if I have to ask them to take a rate that's lower than they would normally take like for a commercial service, like sound post-production or whatever. But I try to pay everybody. I definitely pay the performers. And um, yeah, I just try to make it work. How much is one porn production? Well, I mean, it really varies, uh, but thousands and thousands of euros. Like, Silver Shoes um, 
you know, it should have cost well over 50,000 euros, but I got so many discounts from people who really believed in this project, so they were willing to do stuff for cut rates, so, but it was still thousands and thousands and thousands of euros. Well, I would like to say that right now, a lot of the porn, particularly the alternative performers, are like starting to talk publicly about um, kind of putting a meme out there in the world that it would, if you like alternative porn, please think about paying for it because we totally understand uh, how tempting it is to download stuff illegally, but um, we're not big companies, like often we're just one person like me, so you know, if you like, you know, if there's performers you like or, or uh, labels that you like and you do, and you like their work, like consider buying some of it, uh, you know, even buying DVDs for yeah. gifts or whatever, just to keep us afloat because there's nobody who's gonna step in and save us if we go bankrupt, and I already know some people who've had to stop because um, yeah, because they just couldn't couldn't make it work and so many like mainstream porn companies won't represent us either because like we're not fitting into the traditional genres or we have body types that they're not interested in and and um, you know we have to work twice as hard as anybody else so yay pay for some <laughs> alternative porn <laughs>
not put people on film who haven't agreed to be there. So managing the environment is really complicated, but it's crazy not to shoot in Amsterdam. So I'm really excited to do that. And you do a Kickstarter or something maybe for funding the movies or are you? Well, strictly speaking, Kickstarter and Indiegogo don't allow projects like mine. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. So it is possible to circumvent it by being very vague in your description as to what it is and hoping that um, uh, Indiegogo and Kickstarter don't notice and uh, then just marketing it to your friends, um, telling them what the project really is. But uh, So that, that's a possibility for me. Uh, there are also a couple of crowdfunding platforms that are local to particular countries where they aren't um, prejudiced. The Germans. The German one, because there was um, at least one project yeah. funded here. And also there's a, a Dutch one, which is a film crowdfunding site called CineCrowd, and we've been talking about doing some crowdfunding there. Um, so that would be great, particularly for this new fiction uh, feature, which will be have a lot of exterior stuff, and um, it's going to be a big production. I, I would really love to do it right. So what would you do with a lot of money, and what would you shoot, or... Yeah, well, I think that everything, if you just had... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what would I do? I mean, I would definitely be doing basically exactly what I'm doing now, just better and paying everybody more, you know? Like, um, I think once one of my family members asked me, like, you know, if I had all the money in the world, what would I do? And I, I was like, I'd basically do this, just better. Um, because I really love what I do. Uh, but in terms of, like, yeah, what specifically, I, I really I don't even know. I just, I do this new film, but I do it right. Like, and really take my time with the casting, because the casting it takes a lot of energy and time um, and money to, like, go and meet people and try to find the correct people. So it would be really exciting to have that. And it would also be really exciting to... Um, be able to work with performers from different countries on my schedule because right now uh, if I want to work for example with a performer from Australia so in Silver Shoes um, one of the lead performers Leandra Dahl lived in Australia and uh, I couldn't fly her back at my convenience because it just wasn't possible whereas if I had all the money in the world I'd be like great I like you from Spain I like you from Australia I like you from San Francisco come on over for the weekend. <laughs> yeah and I think in a way that would probably be the biggest change to my production because right now the timing is very strange because it's based in part on the schedules of the performers and and when I can get them. Um, so I think that probably the biggest change is I would have exactly the people I wanted when I wanted them if I, if I uh, had all the money in the world or got an airline sponsor. So can we get an airline sponsor for, uh, for the alternative porn and erotica world? I know I would really value that as would many of my friends. So let's, let's like work on that. And what's the criteria to uh, be in your porn? as an actor? Well, what I say is if you love your body and you love sex, I am totally up for working with you. So I don't have any um, criteria about what you need to look like, you know, you don't have to be cis, you don't have to be skinny, you don't have to be white, um, you don't need to be able-bodied, like whoever is psyched about who they are and wants to like be part of showing it as part of this piece of art, I'm totally up for it. So. Um, uh, yeah, I, I more and more as people hear more about Blue Art Joke and they see what I do and they decide like, oh, this is something that I believe in. I'm now getting more diversity in the people that apply and the people that I have the chance to audition. But really, it's it's mostly about like, do you understand what I'm trying to do and are you willing to be um, vulnerable in this process because this isn't. It's not like making um, uh, a different kind of porn or acting where you can just like like be really good at doing the job but take a detached approach. You really have to put something of yourself in it or we're not going to make anything good. And I think I, I have a really good eye for casting. Like sometimes I just have a feeling there's something about that person that's good, you know. And I have to take a lot of risks. Like on Headshot, for example, like the guy that I worked with, he'd never done anything pornographic before. He could have easily, at the last minute, said, you know what, this is not my cup of tea, it's over. And, and in fact, for almost everybody, everybody who doesn't have porn experience, um, they could easily say, um, 
yeah, this isn't for me at the last second and I would be out a lot of time and money, but you know what? It hasn't happened yet. Um, and I don't know if I'm just really lucky or if my process is good, but yeah, I think everybody so far is having a nice time and I hope that continues that way. Great. So thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> thank you.